Hi everyone, I'm Melchior. Most of you may know me as one of the wise men who followed the star. You know, we three kings of Orient are. Love that song. I'm here to tell you a story of three wise men who journeyed for miles and miles to meet the forever king. See that guy on the roof? Yep, that's me. Just studying the stars like I do every night. But this night was different. I was on the brink of a great discovery. It's really you, isn't it? The star from the prophecies of old. I have to tell the others. Dear Gaspar and Balthazar, I write to you with the greatest news. The Forever King has been born. I just saw the star appear in the east, and it's not just any star. This is the star from the great prophecy that speaks of a king whose kingdom will last forever. The king whose kingdom will last forever? But how can he be so sure? I want to invite you both to come with me to the kingdom in the west to meet this king who has just been born. Huh. Easy for him to pack up and leave. I'm sure the stars don't need Melchior's assistance, but these kingdom's riches will surely fall apart if I'm not here to keep order. Does he think I have all the time in the world? I know what you are thinking, that you don't have all the time in the world. Consider the wise men who came before you. How many of their names are written in eternity? We have the opportunity of a lifetime. Don't waste your life, homie. We ride at dawn. I am so gonna regret this. On the other hand, the stargazer's got a point. If this baby will truly be the king of everything, then I want in with the royal family. But on the other hand, I'm so gonna regret this. <gasps> Balthazar? Gaspar, it's been a while. It sure has. How's the, uh, the potions going? Actually, not uh, potions, incense. Ah. I've been trying to find the holiest of smells. Here, smell. Okay. Holy moly. Oh, that is, uh, that is unique. Woo. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, where's the stargazer? I thought he was coming with you. He's not here yet. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, uh, sorry I'm a little late. Uh, overslept a little bit. Uh, that's what happens when one stays up all night gazing at the sky. Uh, I guess. Boy, am I glad to see you guys. Uh, so, shall we begin? Where are the horses? Yeah, what happened to we ride at dawn? Oh, you guys know that was just a figure of speech, right? You know, make it sound a little more epic. No? Uh, okay. Um, well, we will be traveling this way. No, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. This way, adventure awaits. from our destination. We've traveled for months, climbed through mountains, and trudged through snow. And my beard is out of control. We must be almost there. Well, according to my map, 
and the stars last night, we are about halfway there. What? No, we have to be farther than that. Come on, guys. This is great news. All this time, I could have spent working on my incense. The kingdom will be in ruins without my help. Plus, I miss my nice soft bed and my pillows. I miss my pillows. I miss my workshop. All my wonderful smells. All I can smell out here is nature. Ugh. Guys, guys, kingdoms rise and they fall. Not even the stars last forever. But what we're going to, the forever king will. Now, don't you think that's worth just a few more months of walking? But how do you even know this prophecy is real? Exactly. Or, or that this star is the right star? I vote we go back. Yeah. Wait, wait. Don't you guys remember the legends we were told when we were younger? About the wisest of the wise men of old? Of course, I mean the men who could literally walk through fire without being burned, or sit next to hungry lions and not be devoured. Or read the king's mind and foretell his dreams in the future. Right, and their god who protected them from the fire and the lions and revealed great mysteries to them. And they claimed that of all the mysteries revealed to them, this was the greatest. He's got a point. On the other hand, what if we're just believing in made-up stories? I guess I just have, um, oh, what's it called? It, it's a word for when you believe in something you haven't quite seen yourself. Ah, uh, on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, I hope you all continue on this journey with me. Anybody want trail mix? Yes. Whoa, look at this place. I can't believe we finally made it to the royal palace. I know, we're so close to meeting the forever king. <coughs> oh, great king. We have come to celebrate um, your new son, the new king. Yes, and we brought lots of gifts to celebrate him. <coughs> First of all, you must do something with that gift. That is just awful. And second of all, all my children have grown up. I haven't had a child in years. Well, there has to be another heir, maybe a a nephew or a cousin twice removed. Does it really smell that bad? His birth was foretold many years ago. The king whose reign would last forever. The star in the sky was a signal of his birth. You know the prophecies, do you not? <laughs> of course I know the prophecies. What are they talking about? <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> the prophecy about the king who is to be born in Bethlehem. So, he must be somewhere in Bethlehem. You know, I was planning on visiting him myself. Why don't you guys, once you find him, come and tell me where he is? And that way, I can make him an offering myself. Now be gone with you. I wouldn't want to delay your journey. Yep. Uh, good one. <laughs> well, that was awkward, eh? I knew it! I knew the entire time we were following the wrong star. Wait, 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 now that I'm thinking about it, we didn't even follow the star last night. We just assumed it would be here at the palace. 
Yeah, we have to head to Bethlehem, guys. Okay, we're gonna wait till nightfall, and then we'll follow the star into Bethlehem. Come on, we're so close. Let's go. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shown. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is definitely the place. You've got to be kidding me! This is the house of a peasant! Yeah, I think your telescope needs some recalibrating. We came all this way, and you're telling me the Forever King lives in a barn? Improbable, yes. Impossible, no. But even if it were, you know what else is impossible? Walking through fire. And the greatest of our wise men was able to do it. And if they can do that, surely we can walk through this door. True. Uh, can I help you? Greetings. We three men have traveled far from a kingdom in the east guided by the star. Okay, what's your business? Yes, um, uh, we have offerings, lots of them. Gold, uh, incense, Yes, and... um, these, these gifts are for the new king, if he lives here. According to my calculations, you should have a baby boy here, do you not? Ever since he was born, we've been having some very strange visits. But whoa, three, three kings is a first for us. Mary, did you know that our baby boy would be so popular? Oh, whoa. Um, hello, um, your majesties. Please forgive us. Come in. All my life, I've waited for this moment to see the forever king with my own eyes. May I ask his name? His name is Jesus. Wow. A beautiful name. Well, I didn't pick the name. The angel did. The angel? Yep. The angel also said that our child will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And God will give him the throne of the King David, and he will reign over our people forever, and his kingdom will never end. It's a long story. Please enjoy some food.
to love one another his law is love and his gospel is peace chains easy pray for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall Sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord Oh praise his name forever, his power and glory evermore, we proclaim his power and glory. to all he brings risen with healing in his wings while he lays his glory by born that man no more may die born to raise the sons of earth born to give them second birth hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king
after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Of all the Christmas stories that can be found in the Bible, this is the one that intrigues me the most. In this story, we find three figures who are wrestling with what-if scenarios that all orbit around the birth of this forever king named Jesus. I find it very fascinating because I'm always asking the question, like, how did these wise men know, these magi know about this prophecy? I mean, they live a thousand miles away. They lived in Persia, which is at that time on the other side of the world. What was it that they knew that caused them such anxiety in their hearts to make such a costly trip, a dangerous trip, a long trip? It took them at least one year, maybe two years to get there. What was it that drew them? The answer can be found if we learned a little bit about who they are. You see, the wise men, these magi, they were the astronomers. They were the philosophers of their culture. They were the political and religious elite. They were lawyers. They had prominent positions in the kingdom. Have you ever heard of the laws of the Medes and Persians? They were the ones who came up with that system. Historians tell us that these folks, these wise men, they were so influential that in order to become a king, you have to master the same disciplines and pass the same studies of the wise men and eventually be endorsed and approved by them. This was so well known that the wise men, the magi, were actually nicknamed the king selectors. With that in mind, it starts to make sense that they would be on the hunt to know and to look out for anybody, anyone who would be king. And at that time, history tells us that in the Orient, in the East, there was rumors that were widespread about a king that would be coming up out of Judea that would re like reign over a universal empire. And the fascinating part is those sources come from other sources than the Bible. For instance, a Roman historian named Suetonius speaking about the time when Jesus was born. Quote, there had spread over all the Orient an old and established belief that it was fated at the time for men coming from Judea to rule the world. So of course the wise men would be on their toes looking and waiting, but also there's another piece of information that the Bible fills in for us. You see about 700 to maybe 900 years ago, Much grace, it's 2020, right? Come on. And so, I don't even know where I was. Oh yeah, so the Bible, Israel was in exile in Babylon. And we might know the story of the guy named Daniel. Daniel was a prominent leader in Babylon. He was a Jew who was exiled in there. And a lot of us know the story because he was the one that was thrown into the lion's den. And God shut the mouth of the lions and all that kind of stuff. And God did a lot of miracles through him and his companions. Daniel was the leader of these magi. And we know that Daniel feared the Lord and respected the Lord and worshiped the Lord only, that it is without any doubt that he shared these prophecies with these wise men, shared these prophecies of a coming king that would reign and rule forever and establish a forever kingdom that would bring light into a darkness, a king like any other king. So it makes sense that they would be looking. Now you gotta imagine this scenario playing out, okay? So these wise men, they come a thousand miles from Persia to Jerusalem, and they bring with them an entourage, probably better to describe it as a small army. When people hear that they're coming, people know who they are. They understand the wise men. They know what's at stake because they're the king's selectors. Their reputation precedes them. And so what's going to happen? you got to imagine the what-if scenarios are all brewing there. A lot of stirring is happening. These wise men come in and they're asking the questions, where is the king of the Jews? Where is the one that's to be born that's going to be the forever king? And they're astonished that nobody knows. They didn't come to coronate this king. 
They didn't come to take him away and establish him as king in some other kingdom. No, they came to worship him because this king is different. He's a forever king. But it all started out when they saw the star and all of the what ifs. What if the prophecies are true? What if now is the time? What if this is the sign that the king that will build and reign over this forever kingdom is here? What if? And they were so excited, so full of hope, so eager that they were willing to risk anything and everything to journey a thousand miles just to find out, to search for this newborn new king. But not everybody was excited about this. When Herod, the king, heard this, Matthew tells us, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born, where the Messiah was to be born. And they told them, well, our scriptures say in Bethlehem of Judea. Herod was troubled when he heard that the wise men are in town looking for a king and that they didn't come to him to pay homage. you got to understand, he was deeply troubled, and so was all of Jerusalem. There's so many what-ifs going on in their minds. Herod is going, what if this is true? What if this is the new king? What's going to happen to my throne? What's going to happen to my power? And the people of Jerusalem, you got to imagine too, because Herod was the puppet king that Rome established over the nation of Israel at that time. They're like, okay, we got a new king. What if Rome finds out what's going to happen? Is the Romans going to come and, you know, wage war and, you know, start to kill us again? All sorts of anxiety, all sorts of uncertainty that is there. Herod, he's searching, just like the Magi, but the Magi are searching to worship Jesus, but he's searching because he's feeling threatened. I want to ask you a question. How many what-if scenarios went through your mind in 2020? What if COVID gets really bad? Imagine those thoughts in March. What if, what if this happens? What if, what, if, what if this happens politically? What if this party wins? What if that party wins? What if this happens financially? What if this happens economically? What if this happens to my relationships? What if this happens to the schools? What if this happens with sports? College sports is a joke, by the way, right now. Just saying. What if? And all of these what ifs, they just produce uncertainty and anxiety and it causes trouble inside of us. And when we have what ifs, we want to search for answers. And a lot of times what we're doing in that process is that we're discovering areas where our hope has been shaken. The Magi journeyed searching for Jesus out on what if. What if this is true? And they were hopeful and excited to worship. Now Herod is troubled. Because of a what if? What if it is true? What if God did send his son? And what if he is the forever king? What does that mean? Now, we understand Herod pretty well. Because when we feel threatened, we do all that we can to try to eliminate that threat. And that's exactly what Herod did, because he's not out to worship Jesus. In fact, he even starts to secretly call together the wise men. He said, hey, can you tell us when you saw that star? Okay, great. Our prophets, our scripture tells us that this king that you're looking for would be in Bethlehem. So won't you go make a diligent search for that baby? And when you find him, come back and tell me about it, because so I want to go and worship him as well. Sure you do, Herod. Herod wants to extinguish this baby. In fact, if you were to continue reading this story in Matthew, you would discover that it's really dark. It's really evil. But that's what happens when people feel threatened. We fight to hang on. We cling to what we believe is our rights. And we do the same thing. We might not go to the same degree as Herod, but we engage in open rebellion with God, especially when he comes and says, listen, I am the king. I love you and I came to save you. Lay down your life, and that way you can find life. And a lot of times that is a threat to us because we don't want to surrender our rights. The wise men started this journey on a what if. What if it's true? And they were excited. Herod heard the king selectors are in town. 
And he had a what if, but he felt threatened. You see, Jesus was born as the king, as a forever king. And this king is different than any other king. He's not corrupt. He's not a tyrant. He's a king who knows everything. He knows everything about you and still loves you. He loves you in spite of you. He loves you because of just who you are. He's a perfectly just king. He can never be deceived or tricked. He's a king that transforms the hearts of people by his grace, and it's his kindness that leads to repentance. He's a king who lays down his own life for us. While we were his enemies, while we were the ones that would be crying out for him to die, because we feel threatened by his throne, he loved us. He laid his life down for us. God gave him to us. The promised king has come. The next part of God's promise to set this world right is being fulfilled. Jesus is king. And so my question for you this evening is where do you find yourself? Do you find yourself more like the Magi, wondering if there's more to Christmas, wondering if this is true, wondering if Jesus is the hope of the world? Because I hope you discovered it in 2020 that all other thrones, all other kingdoms, all other things that we have placed hope in are shadows, empty promises. But Jesus is throne, and his kingdom is everlasting. And he is the hope of the world. Are you like the Magi in search and hopes to find this forever king? Or maybe you find yourself a little bit more like Herod. You feel threatened by Jesus. Because you know he might get a little too close. You, you, you know he might ask for you to surrender this and that's terrifying but here's the beauty this forever king taught us in the scriptures that if we want to find our life if we want freedom if we want joy if we want peace if we want rest we have to lose our life we have to abdicate our throne because he is the forever king and the beautiful thing about Christmas is this constant reminder is that Jesus, our forever king, will always and forever be after your heart. darkness we were lifeless without hope without light till from heaven you descended there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Let's stand together your voice to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the ones you've chosen you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation jesus for our sake you died
the stone was smooth for good, for the lamb had conquered day, and the dead rose from their tombs. As we continue on in worship, I invite you to be seated. Thank you so much for dinner and sharing your story. I hope you enjoy the gifts. Yeah, you might want to use this one a bit sparingly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I got some tips from this gentleman over near the temple. Mm -hmm. Frankincense and myrrh. It is just the scent I was looking for. Here, smell. Hey, that's actually pretty good. Thank you all for the generous gifts and the great company. If you're ever around in this area again, feel free to knock on the door. When the child comes of age, please let him know that my services are always available to him. When he calls, I will gladly come and serve in his kingdom. Surely we will let him know. You have our word. That day, we left to return home but we heard reports from all over Israel about the young man that the boy grew to become, and his wisdom would surpass all of ours combined. But he met a sad end when his own people turned against him. Things didn't really turn out the way my friends and I thought it would, but we still think that something, something will come of his kingdom. Yes, yes, come in. What's the meaning of this? Haven't, Haven't you, you heard, heard the news? news? What news? Jesus of Nazareth is alive. What? He was dead for three days, but he rose from the dead. This is fantastic news. I know. His kingdom exists to this very day, and he is and will forever be its king. Oh, and I finally found that word I was looking for, you know. The one for believing in something you can't see yet? It's faith. We were never meant to put our hope into anything else, into anyone else, into any other throne besides the throne of our King Jesus. We were created to worship him. We will never find our rest we will never find the peace, we will never find the joy that we all long for until we go after Jesus. Until then, we will constantly be placing our hope in false kings and 
empty promises and false systems. We will try to find hope in the things around us and the people around us. We might even desperately try to find it even within ourselves. But I hope you realized how fragile life is and how fickle things can be. All kingdoms, all thrones will be shaken, will be destroyed, but only one will remain. In my humble opinion, Isaiah 9, 6 is probably the most beautiful verse in all of the scriptures. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. Let's just think about that, what that means. God is giving us his son as a gift. And the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Yeah, he might threaten the throne on your heart, but he's doing it because he loves you. He's doing it because he alone should be there. He came into our darkness. He came into our brokenness. He came into our fears, into our anxieties, our confusions and uncertainties. He brought a light into our darkness that can never be extinguished. To us, a child is born. Not to some random strangers, but to you individually. To us, a son is given. John chapter 1. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world, and he was in the world. And the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people didn't receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will, nor of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. That's faith. Faith is receiving something that God has extended to you. Just like the gifts that you're going to hopefully open tomorrow, not on Christmas Eve, because we don't do that on Christmas Eve, just saying. A gift is only a gift when it's received and opened. Otherwise, it's useless. Jesus is God's gift to us. Faith is receiving that gift and believing in him and abdicating the throne and laying down our rights. He is, after all, the wonderful counselor. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. To know peace, to know joy and true rest is to believe in him. And and I'm not trying to make light of it. I just heard a lot of people say, I can't wait for 2021. 21 is going to be such a better year. The future is going to be bright. We're going to get past this. And I'm just like, why wait till then? This moment, right now, this second, right now, can be the greatest moment of your life. Believe on Jesus. Receive the gift. He's the forever king. And when you receive this gift of life, you will live with our forever king in a forever kingdom. He is the light of the world. He is the true light that dispels all darkness. He is the constancy. He is what is consistent. And it's his kingdom that cannot be shaken. He truly is the light of the world. Oh.
Sing right to him, for you alone are worthy. God, we thank you. Lord, we praise you for your son and our king, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for the way that he came in humility. We thank you for his righteous life. We thank you for his willingness to endure the cross for the joy set before him. Lord, we thank you for his sacrificial death in our place on the cross. God, we thank you that death couldn't hold him and sin couldn't hold him. But after he was buried three days later, he rose again and he proved he was exactly who he said he was. The king of all kings, the ruler of all rulers, the one who is worthy to sit on the throne and to be worshipped forever and ever. Lord, we thank you for your son Jesus. 
All of our hope is in him. He is the light of the world. And we remember him tonight. And we honor him tonight. And we lift high his name. The only name by which we must be saved. The name Jesus. We thank you for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We pray in his mighty and in his matchless name. And everyone said together, amen. Amen. Thank you, church, so much for joining us today on Christmas Eve. I am uh, so honored to, to be one of the pastors here on staff. Um, my name is BJ, and um, I'm going to give a few instructions here in a little bit. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you to our online uh, audience for, for being a part of this. We, we value you, and, and we hope that you enjoyed this time as well. Uh, but I'm going to give a few instructions to everybody before we head out. And, and you guys can go ahead and, and put out your candles now um, as I give a, a few announcements. But I don't want to let this moment pass right now uh, without acknowledging God is at work here. God is at work in this room. And do not walk out of this room and, and get to the busyness of what's going on without dealing with what, what God might be doing right now. The gift that was offered, it, it can be received. And I would just ask you to do one thing. Just talk to somebody about it. Just talk to the person that you came with or the person that's sitting right next to you. Uh, in just a moment, we're gonna head outside. I just invite you to, to have a conversation about it. That's one. Um, I also wanted to let you know that, that in this season here at Austin Oaks Church, we have a tradition uh, that on our Christmas Eve service, we wanna love and support the community around us. And we're gonna do that by caring for two organizations that, that serve the least of these here in Austin and the surrounding communities. And those two organizations are Jails to Jobs and God of Hope Ministries. We, we invite you to, to, to give generously, and you can do that as we exit outside into the lobby through into the courtyard. You're gonna see some boxes there that you can give. Uh, we, we just encourage you to do that in response to what God is doing in your life. But um, in just a few moments, our ushers are gonna start coming down and, and dismissing uh, rows by section. And so I just invite you to, to sit here and reflect on what God has been doing and just know that we are thankful to be here ministering with you and, and worshiping with you. We love you, church.